Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. I thought uh, we would make these cute little botanical journals. I've been playing with pressed flowers again. <laughs> and uh, I did some tags and things like that, some bookmarks, um, teaching a class soon with my senior. So I was practicing. And then I thought I really like to make these little, something small that can fit in my purse. Um, so that when I'm walking around town or I'm sitting at the park and I observe something that I really like that I might want to grow in my garden or curious what the flower might be or notes of any kind. Um, it's small and it just fits right in my purse and it's kind of fun to look at. So I haven't really decorated the insides of these yet, um, but I've used up a whack load of scraps and uh, I had some fun using some pressed flowers on these and I really, really like them. So I thought I would share how I made them with you guys and you can copy me or do the same, you know, put your own spin on it, whatever you like, just to give you some inspiration. So there's the side there, one inch, um, one inch width by three by three, and just a little bit bigger with the laminated. So this one has been sewn around and this one hasn't. Um, so let's make these, let's have some fun. So I have cut up some scraps. Uh, so my video isn't a hundred hours long because this is a time, relatively time consuming project. Um, so there are three by three. This is just some really cheap watercolor paper I had left over. So, but you can use anything. You do wanna, uh, the harder the cardstock, the better, the more durable the book. Um, and then I got these, uh, let me see if I can find the package here. These laminated dollar store sheets. You get three in a pack and they're self-adhesive laminating sheets and they're great. I'm having so much fun with them. Um, they're pretty thick. Uh, so they make the book quite durable. So we're gonna play with that today. All right, just gonna move that out of the way for a second. And we're gonna, I like the um, vintage look. I like, uh, I like to rough up my papers a bit. So I'm gonna use some inks. So I have uh, this brushed corduroy, which is new to me. So I've been playing with this color quite a bit. And I quite like it because it, it kind of gives it a, an antique feel. It's got more of a gold vibe to it than the vintage photo. And it's soft, so I quite, I'm, I'm drawn to it. So I quite like it. So I'm doing both sides because both sides will show up through the lamination. I'm just gonna rub some of this on there. We'll play some more. So I like to create a little bit of texture and a little bit of background for my my flowers. So I'm using pressed flowers and stickers. So you can use your fussy dyed, uh, your fussy cuts, you know, you, you can use anything in your repertoire for this. The idea is to cover it with this plastic coating. So anything that needs protection, say a pressed flower, for example, where it can be broken easy, um, you wanna make sure you protect it but you can create the illusion of a pressed flower by using stickers. There's no wrong or right here. It's whatever you like. All right, so that's that color. And then I want to use my trusty, um, what's it called? Stamp that I use all the time. I use it for, and it's just a legible writing. I got it off Amazon. And now I'm using vintage photo. So it's a little bit darker. Get both sides here. And I just want to create a little bit of interest, a little bit of texture. So I rip my stencils right off, not stencils, but stamps right off the rubber, the square backing, because I like to break the stamp up when it comes to these. I don't need the whole stamp. I just want to add that texture. I mean, it doesn't even matter if the writing's the right way up or not. It's just a textural element we're adding here. So I just wanna make sure I get all sides. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna darken the edges a little by just rubbing a, a little bit of the vintage photo to the edges. And then we'll do another stamp. I'm gonna get them all. And you could do both sides if you want. I'll probably end up putting pockets in this. So this is gonna be 
video number one of how we build the book. And then we'll do another video where um, we'll decorate it, but I want to do some watercolor inserts. So we'll do a video of how to do these little mini watercolors, and I'll show you them really quick since I have them in front of me. So all these little watercolors, they're almost like playing cards. They're really cute. And we're going to do these in another video, and then we're going to decorate the book with them on the inside. So just a heads up to what's coming. If you stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, notification, and then you'll be uh, all set to, to participate if you're interested. So here's a, a few stamps that I did um, out of Lino Cuts. Uh, so I, I have a video on how I make some of these, and I'll be doing more videos on that. I just haven't got to it yet. So this is the birdie, if I would use the birdie. So I'm gonna hit him with this corduroy color. And I think I'm gonna put him right in the middle of this one. And I'll do, this one was really fun to, to etch out, to carve out. He was, he was challenging, but he, he worked out quite well. I was really pleased with him. So I use him quite a bit. And what's neat is I know nobody else has that stamp. Right, like it's uniquely mine because I carved it. I'm gonna use this one, which is just kind of like a soft, delicate flower looking, kind of like a, a little bit like a wildflower. So I think I'll put that on here. I haven't decided what's the front or back yet. Just playing. And what I like about the watercolor paper that I'm using, and again, it's just dollar store watercolor paper, so it's not a, a quality watercolor paper, but it's raised. It's It has, um, I don't know if you can see that, but it has texture in the paper and it leaves more textural elements behind in a stamp. Uh, same with the bird here. So uh, again, just an additional texture, which is really nice to use in your papers. Anything that adds any kind of interest, visual texture, without going too busy, makes for a really pretty composition and an interesting cover and journal. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that for now. I mean, you can go all out, you can spray it, you can splatter it with paint, whatever you like. So now I want to um, use the, the sheet. So what I like to do is I move my inks out the way because I'm notorious for getting stuff everywhere, just bear with me and move this out of the way. So I like to open the sheet and work on the sheet so that I don't have to move everything when I have it all laid out. I can just um, clean it up real quick and then have it ready to go. So just make sure I'm in frame here, okay. So now I can decide what my front and my back is gonna be as I start building these flowers. So these are some pressed flowers. Now I did buy these off Amazon. I'm out of my own collection. I've used them all and it's just coming to spring here in Ontario. Uh, so it won't be long before I'm out there cutting more specimens to press, but I had to order some. I have a class, like I said, a class coming up. Um, so I needed some, so I bought these off Amazon. They're, they can be quite pricey I find. So I, I highly recommend you do press your own if you can. Uh, I've show, I have another video on how to build a flower press or how to use a flower press. But if you want to learn how to make one of those accordion paper ones and recycle some cardboard, um, Nick the Booksmith has an excellent uh, accordion style flower press and she walks you through step by step. And so that's what I made a few, I made a few of those and they work great. And they're really inexpensive because you're mostly recycling. The only thing maybe you have to buy is like a, say, uh, uh, like a watercolor paper or something absorbent like that. But anyways, I'm going off on a tangent again. <laughs> I tend to do that. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw some flowers down here and see what I like. Uh, sometimes, you, sometimes it's nice to keep it very simple and then other times it's fun to get really elaborate. So really depends on what you've got going on for the cover and what you've stamped behind. So I do like the flower a little bit more than the bird. So I think I'm gonna make, so you wanna lay it out where the cover, the back cover is first, the middle, and then the front cover, back, middle, front. 
and that will make sense in a minute if you if you're not sure why because of the way it folds and creases you want to lay it in that order so got this guy here I have some more in here sorry I wasn't very prepared so I tape this closed to hold them in place, but I think I'm just gonna dump them all out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not very fragile. I'm, uh, I'm pretty rough, they're fragile. So I have them stuck in here, let's pull them out. Um, that's one of the things working with pressed flowers is you do have to be relatively fragile and not fragile, what's the word I'm thinking, delicate. They can be quite delicate to work with. All right, so I just wanna pull them all out, see what I got to play with, because I like I like the greenery as much as the flowers. So these are a bit too big, but we can snap them. We can use little bits and pieces. So this is the fun part. You get to really play and lay things out and see where you like things. Take things apart carefully. <laughs> yep, I get it everywhere. There we go. Let's put this guy this way. And I think I want a little bit of green here. So I'm gonna find another fern. Love these little ferns. And then I'm just gonna build up a layout here. So this can be the time consuming part, but in my opinion, also the funnest part. So it really, you really get to transform these and, into something really pretty and unique. So just gonna keep playing here. And then I also found um, these Tim Holtz, sorry, Jim, Jim Holtz, Tim Holtz, oh boy. Is that a J or a T? Jim, Jim Holtz, <laughs> sorry. Um, I bought these a while ago and I always forget to use them. So I found them and I thought these could be fun to add to the cover because they're really tiny and they're adorable. Little ephemera here. So like a little field note something with a tree. These are a bit big for what I'm looking for. A little butterfly or moth. So I'm just gonna pull a few out that appeal to me. And then I'll probably end up having to tone them down because they're not quite the same color that I'm looking for. Um, but they're so tiny and they're so adorable. Like if you haven't used these before, I love them. There's the one that's a specimen, I like that. And there's little cutout mushrooms. So this is what the pack looks like, audiology. Jim Holtz audiology, 134 pieces. So anyways, if you have, I, I believe I got them on Amazon. I think they were on sale when I bought them. But uh, I usually don't buy this sort of thing, but these were just too adorable. And then of course I, I, I forget about them. So now that it's like finding money in your drawer or something, it's like, oh, look at all these fun things I have to use. <laughs> so it's great to kind of reorganize your, your stash every now and then. So am I in frame down here? Uh, I'm just gonna move it up a bit just so I can show you. I'm going to tone these down by using the, I don't know which ones I'm gonna use yet, so I'm just gonna tone them all. So I'm gonna use the ink. Because I want the colors to be cohesive together. These are a bit gray. So I'm gonna add the gold, goldish color, the um what's it, something corduroy, brushed corduroy. And you'll see it will tone them down and kind of bring them into the the color I'm looking for to match my book. I don't want it too matchy matchy, but I do want the tones to be close together. Alright, so let's see here. So I like this so far. And then I think I'm gonna do something like this one. And then maybe the moth. 
Okay, so you want a general layout because we're going to put a little bit of glue on this. Okay, so that will be the cover. This can be the back, which I can keep relatively simplified. Something simple like this. And then I like to put a word in the middle here. So I printed, I've typed up a bunch of words and printed them out. And now I can find something that appeals to my book. Let's see what names we have. Flora. There's garden. That will work in one. I was thinking nature or something. Do I have the word nature? Oh, yeah. This are, yes, I do. All right, so let's use these two. So I kind of like to have um, these little words going up the thing. So when they sit on the shelf, you can see their, what they're about, which is kind of cute. And these I just, again, I just typed them up on a computer and then printed them off on coffee, uh, normally on coffee dyed paper, but my book isn't work, my printer is packed um, and it wasn't working anyways, but, so this I did on Procreate and created a coffee dyed looking paper just to, um, cause I love that vintage look. But you could print them out on regular white paper and then use your inks to vintage them. So garden and nature. And what I like about this project too, for somebody like me who is always working very quickly, because it's so tiny, everything's tiny and finicky, it makes me really slow down which is something I need to learn to do. So I have been enjoying that part of it. Okay, so now I wanna put, I wanna put something else here. So we could use a sticker. Did that flower? What else have we got? This pretty little pink guy. Could go on the back. There's orange. Too busy, it's getting busy. So, this blue is really pretty too. I think I've used the blue already on the other one. Hmm, I need something, just a little, something red here. I wonder if I have a small sticker mixed in here. I got rose, use one of these. I like that, that works for me. And then maybe something, maybe lose this guy for a minute. Oops. And then this guy here. Maybe build it out like that. Then the rows. And then something here. Like that. I like that. Okay, let's do it. So what I like to do, because again, that I told you that that um, when you peel that backing off, it creates a static. So if I were to roll this, everything would stick to it and nothing would lay properly. So you have to add a tiny bit of glue, and it can be tricky because you don't want to you don't want to make it messy. Uh, you don't want the glue to show up underneath. Uh, sorry, show up through everything. So I'm gonna lay this guy where I wanted him. I'll move this aside for a second. And then uh, this guy, I believe, went next. Put a little bit of glue. Try and get him where I want him. This is the finicky part. This is what I struggle with. Are you guys, uh, are you guys patient? Do you find you run out of patience quickly? Um, I'm no surgeon, that's for sure. <laughs> this would, working with these small things, I find really challenging. Okay, don't like that. So let me just move this guy some more. Like you really have to have patience for this stuff. Put it like that, and then the field notes down. Don't like that. So I think this guy went on top. Can't remember now. And then this guy. We'll put 
put here because it's glue now. So I don't want uh, I don't want the glue to. Okay, I'm not liking this one. What did I do differently? I think it's these guys are there. That's better. And then I'll put some tiny bit of glue on this. We're basically just doing it so that it doesn't stick to the the plastic when it rolls up. Because I've had that happen, and then there's no undoing it. So it's once it's stuck to that sticky part of the plastic, especially delicate things like pressed flowers, it's not coming off. So try and center that. We'll put a tiny bit of glue on this guy. I'd probably use white glue too if I had it available, but I've packed it. Oops. But I've packed it. So I have to use what I've got here. And I glued it to itself. See the patience you have to have? Um, I don't know what happened there. Broke it somehow. So this is gonna have to get cut here because it's a little too long. And where did that stem go? I'm gonna see if I can just put a tiny bit of glue on that since I broke it. <laughs> Look how tiny these things are. Oh boy. Oh, I just broke it. See what I mean? Super delicate. Not my, not my jam. Delicate's not my thing, but like I said, it's teaching me to slow down a little bit. Okay, so there's that. Now let's do this one, see if I remember how this one goes. We'll start with this guy. But I think these make the, the most adorable little books. Like that. Then this. Then the sticker, if I can peel it. Can't always peel these guys. There, this is what turns me off using stickers, but forcing me to slow down. Ooh, I think I got it. Maybe, yep, got it, woohoo. I find I'm mean, always in such a rush to create that sometimes I forget to enjoy the process a little bit. And the process is just, it's the fun part. It should be the fun part. There. I think it needs a little green here, though. I feel like there's something missing now that I've laid it out. Let's do the rose. It needs something in that corner. Come on. My videos would be like eight minutes shorter if I didn't have to peel these. <laughs> so you can see the possibilities for this or whatever. They always look different from person to person just because of the way we think and create and because of the supplies that we might have. But I think these are a really cute little project. I hope you do too. Really, this is ridiculous. Got it. There, just feel like it needed something down there. I don't know if I like that there. <laughs> See if I can peel that up carefully. There, that's a bit better. Okay, do this one. Garden. You can add flowers and stuff to the sides as well if you want to. I'm going to leave it pretty simplified. And then this guy, should I put some green back here? I feel like he's kind of left out. I feel like this still needs some green over here too. 
Am I overdoing it now? Which is easy to do. What happens is you can make it very busy. But I also love that layered look. Uh, where did I put that fern here? I just feel like the back needs a little something. A little something more. Where did I put that pink flower? There. Something like that. Yeah, I like that. All right. Just to give the back a little interest. And we'll put just a tiny bit on this guy's head, just so he doesn't vacuum up. These ones are super delicate. All right. Okay, let's give it a go. This is the most, this is the stressful part, is closing it up. But just do your best. You could do one at a time too. You don't have to do two at a time. So I'm gonna line them up the way I want them. And I'm gonna leave about a eighth of an inch in between, if I can, in between the books so that they have room to fold. All right. And again, you don't have to be perfect. It's just, it's for fun. I should have peeled that first. Make sure these are still lined up. It is, it is for fun, so don't stress too much. Just do your best, that's all. Make sure there's nothing in here you don't want sealed on the book, like this blue guy. Don't know what that was. Okay, and then I'm just gonna roll it. And because things are glued, they shouldn't vacuum up. There we go. Not too bad, that worked. So what I like to do now is I use the back end of my tweezers or you can use the back end of a pen or a pencil and I wanna push around the seams here so that the, the, paper, the two sticky pages stick together and they have more traction. So you'll see here, oops. You'll see here there's an, a bubble in between the paper and where it actually sticks. So you wanna push that in and that will make the adhesion stick all the way up to the paper. Push that air right out of there. And then we're gonna cut it. And then I like to sew it, just reinforces it and again adds that little bit of texture. So there's our two book covers. All right, you can use your cutter if you're like me and don't cut straight, but I like things not straight. It doesn't bother me if they're crooked. It just looks more handmade to me. Perfectly imperfect. So I do about a eighth of an inch away, but you can do whatever seam allowance you like here. And then I'm gonna run it through. Hopefully my sewing machine will cooperate cooperate today. It's been acting up a little bit. It is a pretty old machine. And I'm just gonna cut here now. And then we're gonna sew around. And then we'll do the, uh, why is that not cutting? Stubborn. Hmm. The scissors are getting dull. <laughs> Look at them. What a mess. <laughs> Good job they're just dollar store scissors. I'll have to clean them up. There we go. All right, let's look up. Get rid of that. I will bring my sewing machine in if I can. Sorry, I have a very small desk. So I'm just gonna zigzag around with whatever thread I have in here. It looks like I have blue on the bottom and brown on the top. <laughs> All right. Oh, 
I'll just do the one on camera here. I love the sewing part. Um, I don't actually like sewing, but I love how the sewing machine adds just another layer of texture to an, um, a journal and paper. It really does add um, more visual interest, more texture, more layer, which is just adds, again, an, another fun part to the book. Can't find my words today. It also helps with durability too. I mean, it help reinforce this plastic. So there it is. I just sewed all the way around. Uh, you could sew a square in here. You can do whatever you like. So there's the inside and there's the cover. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to use this now. And I'm just gonna score it. My little score machine. I'm just gonna use the back end of my tweezers here. And I'm gonna score it down the center of where, I wanna do this side, sorry. The side that it's gonna fold in. Of where the fold is gonna be. So it helps just put a dent in that plastic. So then it folds nice and neat. There we go. There's a little cover. So cute, love it. Okay, put this out the way. Don't think I need that anymore. So I won't do this one because I won't be tedious with the sewing machine. We'll do this one together. So there's the cover made. Now we do the um, little inserts. So I just wanna make sure that anything that's raised, so uh, if the flowers that you're using or stickers or paper are thick, you wanna make sure you just run something like and burnish it so that all the um, all that adhesive is sticking to something. There's no air in there. And it just takes a second, but it, it adds just, a, it flattens things out and uh, makes it just a little bit nicer looking. So there's no air bubbles, it's just flat now. All right, so now let's put some uh, inserts in. And I did cut a bunch, so you don't have to watch me do that boring step. So I just used a bunch of scraps and uh, put them together. So uh, they're just a little bit shorter than three by three, so I think I cut them two and three quarters of an inch, or two and, well, I don't know my math, just uh, maybe an eighth of an inch shorter than three inches, <laughs> whatever that measurement is. Oh, terrible. And uh, I just folded them in half. So this dimension is three, uh, is almost three inches here. So it'd be six inches across by three, just under three inches down. And uh, I put them together and then I put a staple in them. So I've got one here I need to finish. And you can put as many in here as you like. And again, just using up scraps. So these are all staples. So this is the one that needs stapling. And I just throw them in different sizes, the whole bit, because it's about using scraps and uh, just having some fun making uh, these little mini journals. And then I just staple right in the middle. So what I like to do is I just glue these together with kind of like a hinged approach and then put them in. So this guy's a bit long. Sometimes they, they get bigger on me when I'm not paying attention. So I'm just gonna cut him down now so don't forget. Just a really good way to use up random scraps. Leftover you know, some of the watercolor paper that I had left over went in here. Let's try that. So I did six, six little signatures for this one, and the other ones I did four, but I want this one a little more full. All right, so now I'm gonna find other scraps to make my hinges with. Another scrap, scrap, that's a bit flimsy. You want something relatively strong enough so that it doesn't rip. And I'm just going to glue these together. So I'm gonna fold this in half, fold a half anyways. And this is gonna be my hinge. And again, nothing straight. So there's three hinges right there. So let's glue one together. So all I do is I throw the glue on. 
Now you could stitch right through, right through these into your cover, but I wanted a nice clean back. So this time I decided to hinge because I like the easy way, which would have been the sewing. But I wanted that nice clean backing. So I'm gonna put this up where the fold is, grab the next one, hold it, and then just make sure they're lined up. And I'm just gonna hold them for a sec while I go to the next one. And try and keep them in place while they're drying. This is another thing I don't have patience for, is waiting for glue to dry. Does anybody else have that problem? It's like, that's why I love hot glue, because it's instant. But I gotta learn to cool the jets. Okay. So oh, actually, I brought this out to help me. So that will hold it while I'm gluing. And do another one. And then in the next video, we'll decorate this little guy with some watercolors or water pencils, whatever you might have. But I think these are just, they turned out really cute. One more. And it's been difficult because I've packed a lot of my stuff. Like I said in my last video, I've whittled it down to a tote of tools and a half tote of paper. And boy, that was hard. <laughs> I'm gonna miss my tools so much. Okay, I'll leave that for a sec while we cut another piece. So let that dry. And I should probably put these out of the way without damaging them. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, oh, there's a couple more. Because like I said, they're not cheap if you have to buy them. Well, they're not overly expensive either, but an expense and if you don't have the, the money to do it you don't have the money to do it right I mean it's pricey tools add up so now I wanted to do a uh, backing here I'm not measuring it so I'm gonna put that there and fold that there that works okay hopefully this is glued enough let's see yep yeah, so you can sew through if you wanted to you could sew through this just to reinforce these even more so right through this piece of paper and then glue this down like this where they're sewn into this piece but I'm too lazy so I'm just gonna glue so I'm gonna throw some glue on here. I think I folded that too small. And then I'm gonna fold around this edge. I didn't, shouldn't have folded this, I should have folded this. I assume they were the same width, but they're not. And then I'm gonna glue this to here. So this is a little bit thicker, this paper, just because I wanted something a little bit stronger. All right, and now I'm gonna hold that for a second, see if I can get it to stick. So sewing would definitely make this a lot stronger, um, but I hate sewing. You could poke holes through each signature and sew them, and that's how you. a lot of people do their journals but this is just a little mini journal that I want to throw in my book and I don't I don't want to spend the time I'd rather spend the time decorating it. I know that's terrible to say because building it is important, but I find the glue works. You just have to be more patient with the glue. And then we're going to stick that in there like that. Okay, so let's do it. Dry enough, I hope. So 
I'm just gonna fold a piece here, fold another piece, and I'm gonna hinge the signatures to the book now. So this one is a much fuller book, and I'll show you the first two that I did are much, they've got a lot less signatures in them because I wanted to put a pocket in. So I'm just gonna put that like that, hold that for a second. And then I'm gonna, I'm not gonna glue it to here because I want it to have some flexibility. Sorry, keep working off camera here. There we go. And then this to here. Just hold that for a second. I think I might see if I can get it to squeeze. Might be too thick for this bracket. Yeah. All right, we'll leave that for a second while that's drying a bit. Hopefully it dries okay. So these ones here, you can see there's only four signatures, so there's a lot of space in between the sides. And that's because eventually you wanna build out a pocket that folds out to hold any kind of specimens I might collect. And I haven't got that far yet. I thought maybe uh, that could be another video as well. Same with this one, so four signatures. This, so this one I put centered so I could put an envelope in the back. And this one I pushed the signatures to the back so I could put a thick envelope in the front. So we'll see, we'll see how that works. And then we're just gonna do the tie for this guy. So why don't we do that while we're waiting for that to dry, if I can access it. See how impatient I am? <laughs> don't know, no, I'm not gonna be able to get that in there. Uh, you can just tie around. You can also tie these signatures in. I, I've done that before too, where I just run the tie up. It's kind of nice because you can pull the signatures out to, um, to decorate them. That's usually how I make my journals. But this one I thought we'd we'd glue it and see how it goes. So I just want to make sure I'm not getting glue everywhere here. So there we go, they're glued in. So I'd probably see it's coming away, so I'd probably let that dry a little bit longer. But I'm just gonna put this in real quick so you can see it, how it's done, how I do it. So I basically just use my gator here and punch a nice big hole. And then I use these, I got these off Amazon and they are very crappy. Don't know where I bought them from, but they don't work well. So sometimes it works and then other times I have to redo it. Um, so I'm gonna just hope for the best. Okay, that one worked well. All right, good, phew. <laughs> and then just a piece of, of elastic cord, which I had out. My big elastic cord that I got from a thrift shop. Best like five bucks I ever spent. I love this stuff. So this is really good stuff too. Um, it's, a, it's a lace, but it's elastic. So these are great for your bigger journals to sew in, to like tie in your signatures. I love using this stuff. So I'm just gonna tie it up. So that's it. I just wanted to show you really quick how cute that is. But I'm gonna tie it up because the signatures aren't fully dry yet. So I just tie a knot. Because it's elastic. And what's nice about the elastic is it gives the book room to grow. So there it is, tied up. And then when you wanna use the book, you just pull the elastic off and Bob's your uncle. All right. So let me just put this back on here. So it's a fun way of using all these different materials, really cute little textures, really cute little books in my opinion. I hope you come back, uh, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button and the um, notification button and come back and we'll do some uh, decorating these little guys. And I'll show you how I do these little watercolor inserts next. We'll do a whole bunch of them all at once and we'll uh, decorate these books. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, please come back and we'll uh, see you again. Take care everyone, bye.